back to Brexit. As we heard earlier, it's not just Labour and the Liberal Democrats looking to put down amendments on the Article 50 bill. Oh no, everyone's at it. With the five days of debate just beginning in the chamber, what about the other parties looking to get involved? And will they stand any more chance of success? Well, we're joined now from Central Lobby by Tasmina Ahmed Sheikh, the SNP's trade spokesperson in Westminster, and Douglas Carswell, UKIP's sole MP. Welcome to both of you. Tasmina, the SNP are putting down 50 amendments to this bill. We always like to say there are only 54 SNP uh, MPs, but is this just a publicity stunt? How many of these amendments have actually been written? All of these amendments have been written and absolutely not as a publicity stunt. We've been taking this issue very seriously from the beginning, which is why the Scottish Government were the first uh, devolved parliament, uh, devolved government to publish a, a document, a plan for Theresa May to look at in terms of Scotland's unique position, uh, in terms of how the whole of the United Kingdom has voted. So this is a very, very serious set of, um, set of circumstances and we are going into this debate with a full aim and ambition to get the best possible deal for Scotland and indeed the whole of the United Kingdom because it would appear to us and everybody watching, the Prime Minister wants to escape any opportunity to debate any of these important issues. Right. I mean, is she running scared in your mind too, Douglas Carswell, of all of these amendments which the Tories seem desperate not to discuss? Well, it's 4,236 days since I was elected to come here by my constituents on a promise of getting us out of the European Union. And that process begins today. I, I do believe we should now get on with it. There will be plenty of opportunity for members of Parliament to talk about the deal. Indeed, we're going to have the opportunity to vote on the deal. Today is not a reason to uh, try and frustrate the will of the people. Ultimately, the amendments that we see today are an attempt to basically try and put a spanner in the works. Um, I respect that Tasmina and others are, are, are against the verdict of the voters, but really they should come clean and say that. Um, they shouldn't try and hide behind parliamentary procedure. But Douglas, we're not voting on a deal. We don't have a deal upon which to vote. We have a, a vote on whether we should invoke Article 50 in the absence of a deal. Well, and because it is no deal, because it is no white paper, of course everyone has found reason and good cause to table a multitude of amendments to bring the government to account and to answer the fundamental questions that remain unanswered. Today, Douglas, today is not really a day about the detail of any new deal that may or may not be negotiated. For goodness sake, Theresa May hasn't even begun that process. Today is is basically, do we begin the process of disengagement? Do we, do we honour and respect the verdict of the voters? Um, to pretend that somehow uh, there's an opportunity to discuss some of the wider issues, uh, I personally would like to see a liberal Brexit, and I have plenty to say on that, but I do think we now need to just get on with it and begin that, that process of uh, in triggering right. Article 50 and, and making good on the referendum outcome. Let's talk about one of the amendments from the SNP. Um, Tasmina, one of them is that if no deal can be reached with the EU, then the UK should stay in the EU on the same terms. That's hardly what people voted for, is it, in the referendum? Well, Joe, you're referring to what we term as the reset clause, and that's because the Prime Minister said that Parliament can vote at the end of the process on the final deal. But what if we don't agree the final deal? Then what happens? Because notwithstanding, we're still going to have to come out of the EU because the two-year process will be at an end. So Ooh. effectively, it's a fait accompli. So what we're saying is that we want agreement um, from the European Union that should we not reach an agreement, at the very least, we should be able to get back to where we were at the start. But that, is it realistic that that would happen, Douglas Carswell? Well, Joe, it's probably not a brilliant negotiating strategy if you say to the people you're negotiating with, if you don't offer us better terms, we'll take the terms we've got. Um, I think most people can see that that's slightly flawed. Look, the SNP said it was going to publish its 50 amendments before the bill had even been published. I suspect it sounded like a good idea when they got together to think, what can we do about this? But ultimately, you know, the majority of people have, have just as the majority of people in Scotland voted to remain in the United Kingdom, the majority of people in the United Kingdom have voted to leave. And I, I don't think, with great respect to Tasmina and others, politicians should try and frustrate that. I mean, Tasmina, Guy Verhofstadt, who is the chief negotiator on behalf of the European Parliament, uh, said last night that he wants the UK to remain part of the single market. Uh, that's the SNP policy too, and the Liberal Democrats. But if this bill is passed and Theresa May takes us out of the single market, which is obviously diametrically opposite to what you want, when will your second independence referendum be? Well, let's remember in relation to Theresa, Marcus, uh, Theresa uh, May's single market uh, statement recently we heard on the 17th of January. It took her six months to reach that position. So I think it's fair to say she wasn't sure whether that, whether that was the best position mm. for the whole of the United Kingdom. Nicola Sturgeon and the Scottish Government have, prevent, have presented a compromise position, which is that if the whole of the UK will not stay in the single market, which we firmly believe we should, then at the very least Scotland should be able to do so. Now, we await hearing from Theresa May in terms of whether she's prepared to take that 
that deal to the table on behalf of Scotland. And if indeed she wants to be Prime Minister for the whole of the United Kingdom, I believe it's incumbent upon her to do so. If she doesn't, then absolutely, of course, it remains uh, within uh, Nicola Sturgeon's uh, remit to decide whether she thinks the next stage and the best uh, for Scotland is to have an independence referendum. And that has been at the forefront of the First Minister's decisions from the day the European referendum result was declared. Let's remember, in which every local authority in Scotland voted to remain within Scotland. She is the First Minister of Scotland and it is her duty uh, to take what the people of Scotland have said and make sure that's the reality. Right, but Theresa May has been very clear uh, that the UK is coming out of the single market. Yes, she did say she would listen to the voice of, of Scotland and Wales, the other devolved um, parliaments. But also Europe and even the EFTA countries have said that they wouldn't allow Scotland to, to remain part of the single market unless it was an independent country. So you would have to be independent, wouldn't you, to have a chance of being in the European single market? Well, Joe, I'm not sure specifically to whom you are referring. There are many people who have made comments, but negotiations haven't begun. I think it's fair to say, at the very least, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom should agree with the Scottish Government and the other devolved assemblies, devolved parliaments, that this is what she's prepared to do. And then negotiations in that respect can continue proper. Right. Douglas Carswell, have you got any amendments you'd like to put down? No, I think we should get on with it. The people have spoken. I think we should just get on with it. There are lots of things that we need to oversee and scrutinise, mm. but we can do that once we've got a bit more detail. And the truth is, we're not going to see a lot of the detail until after uh, the German elections. Then we've got a 10-month window when we can scrutinise. I want a liberal Brexit. I want us to have a, an open, accessible relationship and be good neighbours with the EU. I think we can do that. I think Parliament can scrutinise it. Today is not the day for doing that. It's right. a day of respecting the view of the You're voters. You're hardly holding holding um, the government to account here, are you? Holding her feet to the fire, as I think but, UKIP are supposed to be doing. You sound like you're totally signed up to Theresa well, May and everything she's doing. I, I, I reckon I helped write her script, actually. Um, so um, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be making sure she reads it faithfully and, and, and accurately, but I'm extremely happy with what she's doing. This is what people voted for. I think, Joe, I was on your show in the run-up to the referendum, and I think it was either you or Andrew Neil who asked me, did this mean coming out of the single market? I said, of course it did. That was consistently what we said during the referendum campaign. You know, again and again and again, we're seeing politicians trying to use procedure to frustrate what the people There's voted for. There's been no for. consistency over the single market argument at all. What all right. we're heading for is a hard Tory Brexit, and Douglas would say UKIP want to claim victory in that respect. That is not what the whole of the United Kingdom voted for. All right. That's the direction which Theresa May wants to take us fast and furious and we're going to do everything we can to make sure we get the best deal for the whole of the United Kingdom well, and if that can't happen, at least for Scotland. Tasmina, you're going to stay with us. Douglas Carswell, I'm slightly worried you can't tell the difference between Andrew Neil and myself on the questions, but we'll let you off on this particular occasion. Now, <laughs> Do forgive me? Um, <laughs> um, to join the Conservative Party from Douglas. We heard just that it sounded like one. Well, and we'll <laughs> leave that hanging. Now, MPs...